Hey, welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're doing a beautiful watercolor today. This is a African daisies. We're doing flowers. Beautiful painting. Um, you're going to learn uh, in this painting the pencil sketching methods that we use to create this uh, painting. We're going to zoom back a little bit too as well. We do a larger painting here. This is, um, that's the finished painting right there. We do all the methods and techniques to get this painting completed, and it's more of a composition. We do some freestyle things here with washes and some of the colors we use, so you'll see how you can do some creative ideas as you go. As a watercolor artist, you're always trying out new uh, techniques here and there as you go and while you're learning watercolor. That's the most important thing is having fun and trying new different and new and different things. Don't worry about doing some offbeat things once in a while. You don't have to paint uh, everything 100% realistic all the time. Um, and you'll develop your own technique in time, your own style. But uh, this is the painting. We're going to start in just a second. We'll start out with the pencil sketch and then we'll move on to our um, painting portion where we do all the washes. I'll explain everything that we do here, how to mix the colors, how to get the darks and the lights in your flowers really looking good and crisp and clean, and then doing some of the details at the uh, final portion of the painting when we, we do some of these uh, stems and, and twigs and different things like that in this arrangement. So we'll be right back and we'll start our pencil drawing. All right, everybody, we're just uh, getting back started here. You just saw the finished painting, so we're going to kind of like um, start to move forward here and explain the steps, how we go with um, drawing these beautiful African daisies. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we have a, our sheet of watercolor paper. It doesn't matter what size it is. You, you can work in a very, very large format. You can work in a very, very small format. You know, you might work in a 6 inch by 8 inch format or... Uh, like a 10 by 14. This is a 10 by 14. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can do it small or large, or even you can even up it and do like an 18 by 24. Whatever the case is, we're doing the um, portrait style. So um, that, that's just one thing that we always try to keep in mind. I'll kind of just do a quick little informational tidbit here. So I'll do an informational tidbit. I know some of you, I, I go fast sometimes and I might not explain everything I'm doing, but this is one thing is really a basic thing you can write down in your notes and put it into a folder. Um, you might not even need to. You might memorize this the first time I do it. It doesn't matter. I need to write notes a lot because I forget a lot of things, but that's me. You, you, everyone's different. You're the artist. you got to figure out what things you can remember and what things you have to jot down for your notes. So the basic thing is really just, usually you're going to be working in either a portrait. Now I can already see I should be doing this a little darker. All right, so I'm going to do this here. Okay, so that should, looks a little better on camera. I normally don't draw that dark when I'm doing pencil drawings, but I want to make sure we can see this. So this is normally either a portrait uh, style, which is the rectangle up on a vertical like this. So that's our rectangle on a vertical, or we're painting in a landscape, basically like this. Like this, and that's a landscape. So your paper is either going to be usually portrait or landscape. Uh, fittingly, landscape is, you know, a lot of times when we're doing landscapes, you know, seascapes, trees, things like that, mountains. Landscape works great with landscape paintings, works great with a lot of paintings. Actually, most paintings you'll see are going to be set in the landscape uh, orientate, uh, you know, the landscape um, um, format like this. Our TVs that we watch are usually the new panel TVs. Everyone has panel TVs nowadays. A lot of us do. I just got one a couple years ago. Um, panel TV. Many people had them years and years and years ago, but I'm slow to get all the trends, but 
that's the landscape. So most people are very familiar with the landscape. Works great. Portraits are excellent too. You'll see a lot of portraits, of course, of people. Portraits are a lot of times of, you know, portrait paintings, of course. The, the name kind of is apropos um, for, you know, portrait paintings. So you're going to have portrait paintings. And um, we're going to do our, we'll kind of do our, this is me with my cob pipe back at my studio having a little pipe smoke maybe I'll have on some glasses <laughs> okay so that's me uh, in my portrait and landscape so these are the two basically the two um, the two orientation are the two the two formats for, for when you're doing your watercolor so if you hear me say portrait you know I'm my, my pad of paper is upright uh, if I'm doing a landscape, my paper is going to be in the landscape mode, the landscape format, like this, going uh, horizontal. So it's either vertical or horizontal. We can even do that too and say this is vertical and this is a horizontal. So that's really just the two basic formats. And again, I know um, when you're just starting out with watercolor, there's a lot of stuff you're learning. You're just like a sponge. You just keep soaking everything up. Everything that comes your way, you just are happy. You have a great time. You learn it. You, you, if you remember it, you remember it. If you don't, you don't have to worry about it. Um, if you jot it down in your notes, great. If not, not a big deal. It's not going to really... The main thing is the drawing and the painting. That's the key. So, But I just put this on here just so we do a little t you know, tidbit of information here. So we're going to start out with our flower uh, African daisies. And what I'll do is, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do it very simple. I, I'm actually just going to do some stems that I'm going to start with. I'm hoping these are, you can kind of see them a little bit. You can kind of see I'm doing a little bit of the stems here. So I'm going to do one. I'll do like a smaller one over here. One, so one, two. Maybe three up here. You can always erase a few lines if you've maybe done something a little bit too far. You, you know, don't worry about it. You can erase a, a line or two just lightly. I'm just kind of getting the feel for where I'm going to put everything. So that looks good there. And one over here maybe. Maybe this one over here is going to be a little lower. Let's keep this one over here lower. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll even do this. Like that. Okay, so we got maybe like two or three over on this side of the African daisies and one over here. Okay, so that's really the gist of it, trying to get those, um, the stems of the flowers just in some kind of an arrangement a little bit. So we're kind of, I'm referring to a photograph. I can't put it on the camera. You'll work from my finished painting. Always remember, work from my finished paintings, my finished drawings. Much better that you do it that way. Um, that's how I learned how to paint and draw watercolors. I hope you'll do the same thing. Um, so this is again one, two, and three, and then one over here. That's fine. Okay, so we have three or four African daisy flowers. We're going to do these very simply and just have a great time with it. They don't have to come out perfect. Flowers are always fun because flowers are, you know, they, um, they don't, they're not like very, you know, it's not like drawing a, a structure of like a, a building or a car or something like that, they're kind of free-flowing. You, you don't have to do everything perfect. You can just kind of get the basic idea of it and, you, and you'll be fine. So on this one, I'm just going to go out there like this and do this here like that. And then this, maybe I'll start out with the, I'm going to start out with that there. And I'm going to go over here like so. And then this one here, I'm going to go down like so. And what I'm doing is I'm just really contour drawing, which is getting the free flow idea of the flowers. And then we'll go up here, and I'm going to start on this one here, and I'll, 
try to get this pretty centered here. So this is, I'm going to do the, uh, the center of the flower here, like so. And then I'm going to start off and say, okay, where is this petal? So now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of saying to myself, okay, I'm starting out with the center of the flower here. And then I'm going to say, where is my flower petal starting? And they're kind of starting at the bottom of that center of the petal. So then I start there, and then I just start my flowing petals like this. And then this one is a little bit lower, like that. And there's another third one here. That one goes like so. And there's another one like that. And then this one goes over here like this. That one's a little bit of a different shape. And there's another one over here. Like that. And then if you see it, Maybe sometimes you ad lib something, you know, you just like add something in there and you say, oh, I don't know about that. That doesn't look great. I'm going to erase that. So sometimes when I do too much free ad libbing into things, I realize it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to stick with what I'm seeing in front of me. So if you had a bouquet of flowers in front of you or you're working from a picture or my video, whatever it is, try to stick to the most, for the most part, to what you're seeing in front of you. Um, don't ad lib too much, but you can do a little bit of that creative, you know, if your creative uh, juices are flowing and you want to add a little couple extra things in there, that's fine. But kind of, if it doesn't look right, then just lift it up quick with your eraser and just, you know, keep, keep moving forward. So we have two of our flowers now. One here, one here. And then we're going to have one more up top here. And then this one is more like this. And again, the same thing. It's going to be a the center of the flower there. And again, we have the beautiful petals are flowing down like so. And again, take your time. Look at the shapes if you can, carefully. You don't have to go fast. You can actually go slow, no big deal. like that. That looks pretty good. And always remember, no matter what you do, whenever you're pencil drawing, always remember, pencil drawings are going to look a little funny, so don't keep erasing, just keep drawing. Once you start painting, you're going to realize it looks much better when you're putting your paint on. Sketches tend to look funny when you're doing your pencil drawings. They don't look accurate for some reason. I don't know why that is, but that's something you need to hear when you're starting out, especially when you're drawing and you're starting out drawing, you have to realize your pencil drawings are going to look a little weird. They're not always going to look accurate or perfect or really, really good. You just have to trust that when you're putting your pencil lines down, you're doing it as best as you can get it, as accurate as possible, and you have to leave it alone. If you start doing like this all the time, erasing, that's not going to work. That's not really good. Because like I said, a lot of times the pencil drawings for some reason just don't look accurate or really good and I think it's because all it is is pencil lines and there's nothing of um, real excitement as far as colors and and, sh and uh, uh, tonal values and darks and lights. It's just a pencil drawing so I've learned this over time. Please keep that in your mind. Don't get worried about your pencil drawings. If they don't look great you just keep working on them get them as close as you can get them, and then once you start painting, you're going to see that they'll look much better as you start painting. Everything will look fine and look much better. So we got one, two, three of our flowers now completed, so we're in good shape with that. And then we have one more African daisy over here. We'll do this one over here. So this one's pretty close to these, so let's... Let's make this one a little larger, and I say that because, why not make it a little larger because it's closer to us, it's 
closer to us here, and these kind of like three flowers over here on this side, you want to have something that's going to kind of balance it a little more, kind of pull it this way a little bit. You don't want a painting. Again, let me do a little tidbit of information here. Always remember with your artwork, this is just a key thing to remember, quick little tidbit of information. Balance is very important in a painting. So let's say you're working in again, we're working in the um, portrait. If you make a lot of subject matter on one side over here on your painting, like this, let's say, and then you only have a, a, a smaller part of the painting over here like this, this can tend to make the painting look like it's tipping like this and it's going to fall over. That would look unpleasant to someone that's looking at your artwork. So if you had your artwork in the gallery and you want someone to get excited about your artwork and purchase a painting from you in, your, in the gallery or if you're selling paintings online, whatever you're doing as an artist when you're starting to branch out and start selling your paintings and so forth or getting into competitions, whatever it is, if you want to, it's not that you have to, you can just paint for fun too as well. But the thing is, what makes um, artwork pleasant is if it looks balanced, your painting. So if you put a lot of things that look like, we can call this, the, some artists will call this, uh, the see, professional artists will call this the seesaw effect. So if you have a seesaw, you imagine you have a seesaw here. We're talking about now, we're talking about balance. Balance in your paintings. You got to keep, just try to keep this in mind. Does this make sense? Keep in mind balance in your paintings when you're creating paintings, your artwork, your, your drawings and your paintings. Uh, balance is important. So like I said, if you're putting a lot of subject matter on one side of your painting like this, it's going to tend sometimes, not always, but sometimes it will look like it's tipping over. And that won't look as pleasant as if you make something over here, sort of like pulling the weight of back and balance, like a, like a seesaw. So if you have a balance in your painting like this with your subject matter, um, it's going to look more pleasant, more pleasing, balanced. Whereas if you have something like this tip, you have something, you know, again, if you did like a, a landscape painting and you put a rock over here, like not even like that, let's start over again so I make the example a little better. Let's say you have a, a landscape painting like this and you put a rock over here like this. Let's say it's a seascape, and, you know, beautiful seascape and you have the ocean over here like this. And you can do these sketches like this on your own and kind of play around with the idea of balance and kind of see if it's real, if you think it's true what I'm saying. So if you put a rock on your painting like this for a seascape and you got some ocean and some sky, this is going to tend to feel like it's tipping over like this. And again, it's the seesaw effect. If you have something too much over here like this, and not maybe only something over here like this, it's going to feel like the painting's tipping like this. Like that. So that can be very unpleasant for, for someone looking at your painting. It might be sublim you know, subliminal or very kind of like in the background in the person's mind but they're gonna they might think that so you would rather have something like this and then have another larger rock over here just for some balance like that and then maybe you have two rocks you know you have a rock over here rock over here maybe you have a lighthouse up here you have a lighthouse up here something like that you know and that would look much more balanced. It would be much more balanced, like a, the seesaw effect. So just a little tidbit of information. I know I'm kind of doing something a little bit offbeat here from what we're doing on the flowers, but I mention it because on our flower paintings, it, it works the same way too with our flowers. So you can see our flowers have balance to them. They're sort of going this way, but they're still sort of centered. And now when we make this flower over here, we're going to make this one a little larger. And that's going to make it a little more balanced, like it's the painting's feeling balanced and it's not 
going to want to tip in our mind in the way we're perceiving it. So good time for a break. We'll come back, we'll paint this last flower over here, and then we'll start the painting process. And I'm always hoping that you'll, if you're new here and brand new here, this is the first time you're here, I just want to welcome you and say thanks so much for coming by. I'm really happy you're starting and seeing my channel for the first time, and I'm hoping you're going to subscribe on the bottom of the channel picture over here on the right-hand side. There's a subscribe button. You can subscribe, and it no strings attached. Subscribe means you're just going to click on that button, and then you'll be notified on YouTube that I'm creating a new uh, video each week. So you'll always get a little notification saying, Chris has made a new a video at whatever time I make the video, whether it's once or twice or three times a week, you'll always get that little notification so you can ch stop by and check in and see what we're doing. So that's all that is. So if you subscribe, it's a great thing. You'll um, get my um, videos whenever you want. And if you don't want to watch them, you just skip over them or whatever and wait till the next paintings that you like and you watch those or whatever. But I always encourage everybody to watch all the videos because I'm always covering the same fundamental principles and methods and techniques on my channel. So you'll always get the same things that will reinforce, and we know repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you repeat things over and over and over, that will develop into good skills. So you want to have that good skills, and we're going to be right back again. We'll start doing this other uh, African daisy over here, and then we'll start painting. So I'll be right back. All right, we're getting back started again. Let's do our flower here on the right-hand side. We're doing African daisies here. And this one over here, we're going to actually... This flower is kind of tipping towards, towards us more this way. So we're going to see the tops of the, the flower this way. That looks kind of good. The petal kind of going across and sort of attaching to the other. That looks really good. And again, I'm making this one a little bit larger, more exaggerated than what it actually is probably in the... in the uh, picture I'm drawing from. And this one here is like this, and then over here <clears throat> this one here, so these are kind of all level there, on the same level, and this one here is like so. And over here we have this one coming out this way. And this one goes out like this. And I think this one here is a little more quick little erase there just so I kind of see this one is kind of going out a little more this way like that and then this one here has a little bit of a like that so there's different different leaf forms in this that are kind of really interesting so now that's about the three African day four four Af African daisies one two three and four. Again, this one we made over here a little larger to kind of balance. Again, we want to keep the painting balanced. We don't want things kind of you know tipping to one side. Where if you had all our flowers on one side, it would kind of look like it's tip tipping over. So this one here we add the little larger um, daisy over here, and that looks fine. Looks much better that way. And then now what we're going to do next is we're going to start to paint. So I will take one more break before we start painting so that I can sort of regroup here. I'm going to maybe have to spritz the uh, paint tray a little bit, find my brushes, make sure I have my brushes all ready to go. And, and then other than that, and we might want to do a few more interesting details on this here. So um, I would say... Again, I'm going to improv here a little bit. I'm just going to put a couple small, um, just some like twigs and branch, you know, branches. Some of the um, small branch forms that might we might see in a flower arrangement. 
just like this, just a couple here and there. And I'll paint those in with a brush too, and I'll leave I'll leave the uh, pencil lines in there. I don't mind it. But I think that's fine. That's all we need to do. And um, again, this is a composition you're practicing. We're practicing together here to do a composition of some African daisies, beautiful um, flowers here. We're going to get on some washes of paint, but we're not going to make this like a 10-hour marathon of doing all kinds of painting and overpainting and you know, we're just going to try to get a nice fresh looking painting, which is get our pencil sketch in. And then after that, some washes on there. And then we're good. So let's do that. I'm going to take one more break and then I'll be right back in just a few seconds. Thanks. All right, we're going to get ready and we're going to start painting. So I just have my... Uh, simple um, round brushes and uh, my square brushes or flat brushes. These are um, synthetic brushes which are great for beginning uh, in watercolor. So if you're just starting out, you know, you're going to be picking up those uh, inexpensive, you know, six or eight pack where you have six or eight brushes in one package for maybe like ten dollars or five dollars. Synthetic brushes, they work great. They work fine when you're just starting out. So, rounds, and then these flat brushes, and that's it. And we're going to start out by just mixing some colors ahead of time, saying to ourselves, what do we want to do here? We want to create variety. Watercolor, variety looks great with colors. So when you're painting watercolor, just think, lots of variety of colors, and you're going to really um, do really well with uh, the painting process. So here I'm looking at the painting and I'm saying, okay, what do I see? Um, pinks, oranges, reds, yellows, some browns and blacks and blues and purples. I see a lot of different colors. So I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to say, let me mix up First, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the center of the flowers first. So, first thing I'm going to do up top, I'm going to make some darker black wash up here. So some black. I'm careful to rinse off my brush. Also, another thing I always mention is um, I haven't mentioned this much at all, but you can do this. You can have two two water containers if you can imagine. So you can actually use two water containers when you're watercolor painting, especially if you're using a lot of dark colors like this, you can use two watercolor containers, one and two. The first one would be to do the first rinse of your brush in the water pail that's got more of the muddy looking water in it first. Then you go in and rinse off your brush a second time in the cleaner water, the fresher water, if that makes sense. This way you don't have to change your water as much when you're painting. And if you can fill your water containers up, you know, at least halfway, when you're using dark washes like this with blacks and browns, the water's going to get muddy fast. So you could do one of two things. One, you can just use one water container and change the water very frequently. Like maybe every five, ten minutes you can change out your water and just empty it. And then if that's not going to work for you, then you can have two water containers one with fresher, cleaner water, one with darker, muddier water, and that's the one you go into first. So when you go to rinse your brush the first time, you go into the muddier water, then you go into your cleaner water, and you'll keep your colors looking more fresh and vi vibrant and exciting looking. So I'm going to use just one water container, but I'm going to change it often, the water. So that's a little bit of help to keep your colors looking fresh, especially when you're mixing up like this with blacks and browns and the darker tonal values in your painting, your darker colors. So we have that with some purple and some blue over here. We'll pick up a little bit of that. So what I'm going to do is mix up my colors first. 
um, to the palette. Get them, get the colors I'm thinking and I'm seeing in the picture, match them in my mind. I'm matching the colors I see in that painting as much as possible and then putting them out onto the palette like this, just so I have some starting colors to work with. Okay, and then I'm going to look and say, okay, what else do I see here? Blacks, browns, purples, blues, purple over here maybe, blue over here. Rinse the brush, tap a little bit of water off maybe on the tissue. Then let's work into some orange, dark orange, red, um, brown. Very, very little bit of green. I'll keep that over here like that. Then what else am I seeing here? Um, of course our reds and our oranges. So this will be our pink color for our flowers. This is kind of like an orangey red, like a cadmium red. This is like a rose matter or an alizarin crimson. And um, you can make one side a little bit darker. Like over here you can add your more thicker paint and then you can kind of thin it out over here for the lighter tonal values and then over here same thing a little bit more thicker paint there and then just add a little bit of water over here and thin it out a little so you have your variation of darks and lights within your colors so your palette can really help you and be an advantage for you just by putting the colors out on there ahead of time so now I kind of have all my colors that I see in the painting for the most part here on the palette and now all I have to do is just keep filling the palette as I go if I need more paint and I just go oh yeah red over here and they're all sort of kind of close to where they're where they are so I need more of the rose matter alizarin crimson color okay I can just fill that back up again so as you're working you can just keep going back in and filling up areas you need and then if it gets too muddy looking you wipe it all down and then you start again Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do some red and orange like this. And I'm just going to get in some of that red and orange. And I try to rinse the brush off and then dry it a little bit on a tissue. This way at least I can Thin it, out, thin it out a little bit and make it lighter. High intensity in the center and then lighter out. So I rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the paint on the tissue, and then do that, thin it out. And then I see some yellow there. So I'll put some yellow on the outside there. Maybe there's a little bit of white paper I forgot to leave. So I blot that up a little. Then under here, there's a little bit of that color, like so. Okay, and then I'll start working in the, the petals of the flower. So what I'm doing is just referring back to my photograph, rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and I can thin that out and make that look a lot lighter. And then even for more effect, you can add a little darker there. And then there's a little more darker over there, like that. And then the same thing here. This one's pretty even through there. And sometimes I'll add in a little bit of color here just so I can have a little variety, maybe a little bit of purple there. 
And then over here. Then I just rinse off the brush, dry it off on the tissue really well, and then just smooth out that wash a little bit on there. Okay, then this one here is like that. So just do a couple. Again, I'm trying to get some variety. You can leave a little bit of those white spots along the uh, rim of the uh, center of the flower. And you just keep going along. It's a little bit darker in there, in this one here. And that's good to kind of have variety again, variety. You have a darker area there. And I add a little bit of that brownish color, maybe a little darker in there. And then a little more. Try to thin that out a little bit there. Like that. And what I'm just trying to do is sort of look at the picture and the photograph. And I just keep working the colors. I try to again make variation as your a great um, a great method that you have to use a lot of variation and of, of colors and tonal values, the tones, the darks and the lights. Like that. And some more paint. So I'm, tr I'm trying to actually get some more variation in here too, and you still have time to work. That's what's great about watercolor. You can have a little bit of time as you go to add in some more paint. But the key is to add just a little bit of water and then mostly color when you're adding in a little bit of more color to a certain area or two. Too much water is going to uh, uh, create problems with washes getting out of control. So you always rinse the brush, dry it off on a paper towel or a tissue or a sponge first, get that brush pretty dry, then go in, get the uh, paint, and then it's a, you can see it's a drier wash. I'm not putting on too much water. A little bit of purple here. And I do the same thing again too.
and this looks a little darker over here. Now what's good about this is we can start getting in some of these darker So I'm just going to do a little bit of splashing to try to just bring some of that paint background in there already. So I'm trying to already work in my background a little bit. Like so. So I'm just picking up that darker paint we mixed a little bit earlier. And we don't have to do everything with that background color. As you can see, we're going to do some of it. And I'm splashing a little bit and I'm just blotting up a little bit. Have some fun with it. And that's it really. Let's leave that as it is. Just so we sort of kind of get our colors, you know, you can add a little more black like that. You just want to be careful not to have it flow out into the other petals of the flower. So you want to let the petals of these petals dry first before you go in and do the um, darker washes like this. But the key is... That comes with time, working with watercolor. So the better thing to do is to let this dry 100%. The pink petals on the flower, let those dry 100% and then go back in and do some of these darker washes that I'm doing now. And it'll look much better. And again, this is a composition, so don't feel like you have to do anything perfect. I'm just putting on some washes here, having a good time. I blot up some, some of the paint. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of a star effect here by just having some of the paint go out in a, in a star pattern so that it'll wind up looking like a, a starburst from the center out this way. So that's why I'm kind of doing this. Splashing with some blue, maybe. Again, have fun with this. I'm going to leave this very, very loose. I'm not going to finish it too much. This is like totally underdoing things. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to underdo this painting purposely. So, we can see the great effect of underdoing a painting and just putting in the minimal to get some interesting colors on. Okay, so I'm working up here now at the top. These beautiful African daisies. We're doing uh, the top. Let's do the top again here. Orange. 
So I'm using like the oranges and the reds, some yellow. A little bit of purple too over here, shadowing a little bit of shadowing on this side over here. And then I'll just continue right along with the light pink colors, which is um, this again is like a rose matter and a lizard and crimson for the uh, light pink colors with a little bit of purple in there too. So we keep adding the purple and the pink together like that. And then we can do both colors. And that gives us a really nice, um, again, variety. If we just went with one color on this, it wouldn't look that good. It would look boring. So if you add pink, purple, a little bit of red too, some of the um, more warmer red, which is like the cadmium red. That even looks better yet. And then we just plenty of variety there. And we'll go right in. We'll do some more. What I'll do is I'll This is again a la prima painting, all painting at one time. You could do this in a glazing technique where you take a light wash of maybe like orange or purple or pink or just purple and do a super light wash over the whole paper. Let it dry 100% like overnight or with a blow dryer till it's 100% dry and then start painting the same way we're doing now. That would be sort of like the glazing technique where you put a glazing down first then you can do multiple glazings. You can do lighter washes first, let those dry, and then come over with your final dark, darker darks. That's also okay. And then we're going to just do the same thing over here. Orange, orangey red. Like that. Then we could take some brown and black and put that on the. And then just let that flow in there and work. If it looks like it's too much, you can always take a quick tissue and just blot it up a little bit. But once you blot it one time, you have to fold your tissue around a little bit so that you don't blot a second time with the paint on there. Like that, better. Like that. And then you can go back in and get more color if you need to, if you feel like it's like that. And then we continue with our purples and pinks and some variety, purple pinks, even reds too. So you have some red there too, some dark, uh, warmer red, like a cadmium red. This is again our rose matter, lizard and crimson type color. Now if you see your colors start happening like this where this darker dark is flowing down into that petal, I would make sure you have a clean tissue and just lift it up like that. And then I wouldn't work over there anymore on this petal. I would stick over here and I would leave a little white space in between the... You can always go back in and fill in that white space, but I would fill in that white space around the center of the flower. As you can see, I'm really kind of taking my time here. Trying to leave some light lights on those flowers.
purple, red, mix it up. Always good, mix up your colors, lots of variety. Variety is your, your friend in watercolor. You always want to make sure you're using variety of color. That really looks unpleasant if it's just one color that you're mixing and putting onto the paper. So if you just remember that you're mixing lots of varieties of colors and also lights and darks. So you can kind of see I got, <clears throat> I have uh, lots of lights here. There, I have lots of lights and plenty of darks too. So between lights and darks and variety of color, those are the two keys right there. And then we're gonna keep working over here. We'll do the center of this flower. I hope you're enjoying this video and learning lots of fun stuff. We try to mix it up here on my channel. I try to do a lot of different variety of subject matter. And this is again our uh, Extreme Beginner series. So here we're just having fun, covering the basics basically. Also, you know, advanced things too. Some of the things we talk about are advanced techniques and methods, but you know, even if you're just starting out, if you learn some of these advanced techniques right from the start, you're going to be way ahead with your painting skills and you'll be able to really create some beautiful paintings quickly and you know, right out of the gate. And we're just going to keep again variety, lights and darks. If you cover over too much of the petals of the flowers, you can always lift up a little bit of paint with your tissue and just blot it up quick, like that. I was trying to see how much water I can puddle up before it starts to drip down. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Then we lift it up. This paper is really holds the watercolor really well on the uh, paper. All right, so we're going to continue here. So this flower over here is. That's what we can do there. <clears throat> Let's see, here we go. And I'm mixing up even in my see my darks here. I mix up the in the dark darks, so like we're using this the black and the brown, also some blue in there too. So that always looks good, mixing up some blue into those darker colors. And uh, again, this is sort of a fun painting to do. We're just kind of experimenting a little bit. So you saw what I did here. I just did all my petals first, my petals of the uh, beautiful African daisies here. And um, we're gonna actually just get a little more color into this one here, like so. A little bit of the darker dark in there too.
All right, we're picking back up again. Somewhere along the line, my video shut off. I think it got too warm. Sometimes when my studio is too warm, my camera does sometimes shut down. Uh, also, um, when it's uh, starting to overheat, so no big deal. Uh, I don't think we missed much action action here as we were going. Um, again, I was just working the colors on these petals as we go. And then I'm just mentioning that um, variety is important. And uh, not overdoing the painting too much. Let's leave this one way underdone. So you'll hear me say that sometimes. Um, to leave your paintings underdone, you can always go back and add more things to it like the next day or in a day or two after you're done with your painting. But if you add way too much detail in the beginning when you're painting and over overdo the painting, then that doesn't look as good. So if you under finish your painting, it usually looks better. So there's that little area of um, that area of like it looks good to a certain point, but then with too many details, then it starts to not look, it looks unpleasant, like it's been overworked or too many things have been added into the painting. So you kind of have to find that, uh, that feel for when your paintings kind of look finished. And you'll kind of just after a while get to know that. So you're, you're at the beginning, probably just starting out. This is the beginner series, extreme beginner series. So you're at the beginning, you'll kind of get the feel for it after a while, so don't be too critical of yourself if you think, oh, it's I overwork my paintings all the time. That's no problem. Eventually, you'll, you'll just get the feel for like stopping a little bit before that point where you're just kind of putting in too much information or you're not sure what you want to do, so you figure, oh, I'll add something else into it. So here we're doing an underfinished painting. I'm just kind of working on each of the flowers. I've got the, all the flowers now, pretty much each of them looking good. And then we have some stems to do and a couple small twigs and, and stem type forms in here. And I think that'll be it. I think we'll leave it at that. So right now I'm thinking it's good. Let's start working on some of the stems. And we also might want to do some of the dark patterns before we do the uh, stems. So here's where I and this is more of a creative painting. You can kind of see I'm doing some things that are not necessarily realistic, maybe. I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to... So here I'm doing a little bit of this. Mixing some colors on there. Doing some splashes like that. Then I'm going to add some blue in there, too. So I'm going to try to... And maybe just try to work some color into this section here. And again, I'm doing the star pattern. So if this is roughly the center of the painting here. try to add some washes that are going to look like that kind of and if anything we're just having fun practicing doing our compositions here you can come up with your own creative ideas once in a while and just Say to yourself, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some creative thinking here and just have some fun. I'm not worrying about anything else other than just enjoying the process and experimenting a little bit. So you can see I'm doing the star pattern here. Then I can add some darks in there too.
so. I'll just scrub on some paint. There we go. Sometimes that looks good too. Just a little bit of fun. Scrub on some paint. Have a great time. If it doesn't look good, you just start another painting. That's all it is. There we go. A little bit of blue in there. We put a lot of red and pink in there. Let's get a little bit of blue, purple. And again, the star pattern. I'm just trying to basically radiate everything out from the center like this with these brush strokes I'm doing. And you can have fun and just do it and see how it looks. Maybe you'll do it a little bit less. I'm kind of overdoing it with my uh, with my composition here, but you can kind of see how it does look good. It gives it that real starburst effect. It looks great. And then, of course, we did some dark darks. Here and there. And I would sort of leave some areas light, some areas dark. Have fun. That's the main thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add green. I was thinking of adding some green in here, but that might be a little difficult of, of a challenge. Because if you add, try to add green now, we haven't really added it too much to anything else. So that's why I wouldn't, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change the water here. And I'm going to add some more fresh, clean water. You can try all kinds of different color schemes with this type of uh, painting, but the African daisies are the pink color, so that's they might they might even come in different color varieties. So I'm not sure, but I think we're, we're really we have a good a good feel right now for this. This looks good, and. Um, Let's do some stems here. So I'm going to do the stems and the browns and the blues maybe, even some reds in there. I'm just going to kind of mix it up and just do some stem forms here. So I'm using the thicker brush here. This is a thicker round brush, a little bit larger of a round brush. This is a number six Simply Simmons. Like that. Then you can take a couple, lift, lift up a couple spots on that. Then you can even add in some blue. Maybe some blue color and maybe some even red too. Mix up some red, take some red. 
Variety again. Variety is really good. For these stems, a little bit of splashing there. And I'm just going to do a couple splashes here and there, just like that. Not too many. And I think we'll even try our finer point brush here. This is the set that comes with our prang set we use. So I'm going to use that. And this has a pretty good point and I'm going to try to just lean my hand on the paper a little bit and try to... These here I'm going to leave very... just barely wisp those on there like that. A little bit of black, a little bit of brown, blue, red, kind of a mix of every color here, orange, a little orange, kind of gives it a good like, so if we just do a few of these, you can hold the brush up really high off the paper like this and try these, you got to practice these a little first, right, on like some printer paper, I wouldn't try anything too, the, I guess the, I wouldn't try anything too difficult if you haven't practiced it on some printer paper first. That would definitely be helpful to realize that it's much easier to try these on printer paper first, doing some of these like these type of uh, brush strokes with the Like that. And let's call that a finished painting. Again, too much overworking will ruin it. And I think we have a good finished product here. Let's take some of the tape off the paper. It always looks better too when we take the tape off. Kind of it frames it out for us. And again, at the beginning of the video, you'll see the finished painting. I'll put it on camera so that it looks really um, on center, and you'll see all the details. I'll zoom in on it. But that's our finished painting. African Daisies, I hope you enjoyed this video very much. We're going to see you on the next video. And again, happy painting. Enjoy the process, and we'll see you on the next video, okay? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.